Throughout history, the remains of humans from the many generations that have passed before us have been unearthed, studied, tested and documented. In this video, I take a look at five recent cases of human remains which may have never been found if it wasn't for the unforgiving forces of nature. Storm Ophelia hit the UK and Ireland in October of 2017. The storm took five days to form into a hurricane after sweeping across the North Atlantic Ocean. By the time Ophelia had reached the Irish coast in mid-October, it had already begun to weaken, but was still formidable enough to cause damage to property, cut power supplies, cause coastal erosion and take three human lives. On the southeastern coast of Ireland lies Forlorn Point, at Kilmore Quay in County Wexford. It was here on October 17th, following the onslaught of Ophelia, that passers-by discovered the exposed remains of a human skeleton, with its skin still partially intact. Waves from the Atlantic had thrashed the coast for days, and under the pressure, large amounts of earth were washed away, revealing the remains. When archaeologists arrived, and an inspection was made, the skeleton was found to be male, from the Iron Age, and, according to the Irish Post, was between 1,500 and 2,500 years old, meaning the man could have arrived in the region with the Celtic tribes. The remains were taken to the National Museum in Dublin. It's thought that the skeleton may have been part of a larger burial ground, especially as another skeleton was found just a few miles away to the west at Ballyteague Bay in 2015. This is the New Haven Green in Connecticut. It was here on October 29, 2012, that a 103-year-old tree was found uprooted, a casualty of the ferocious winds of Hurricane Sandy. But beneath and within the tree itself, a grim relic of the past had been exposed. A woman by the name of Katie Carbo had spotted a skull lying upside down, with its mouth open in the soil and roots. It was still connected to its spinal column and ribcage. The New Haven Green is known to have been a burial site from 1638 until the late 1700s. It lies less than a mile southwest of Yale University. Thought to be the likely victim of a smallpox outbreak, the body was originally estimated to have been buried sometime between 1799 and 1821. But during a late night excavation, Anthropologists from Yale University discovered a second skeleton next to the first, along with an iron coffin nail they believed to be from the 18th century. This new find changed the estimated burial dates to between 1775 and 1782. Further investigations took place between 2012 and 2013, and revealed that as many as seven bodies lay in that particular site men, women and children. As well as the bodies, two concrete time capsules were found directly beneath the tree. These were put there at the time of the planting of the tree and contained a number of relics from the past, such as letters, newspapers, coins, a grape shot ball and bullet from the battlefield at Gettysburg and a Grand Army of the Republic medal. When the former burial ground was abandoned, the headstones were moved to the nearby Grove Street Cemetery in 1821, but the bodies were left behind. New Haven city officials said that they were aware that the site had been used as a burial ground, but claimed they didn't think any of the bodies remained there. In the 1897 book Historical Sketches of New Haven, the author Ellen Strong Bartlett wrote, Sometimes at the dead of night, Apart from the others, the victims of smallpox were fearfully hidden here. The ground was filled with graves between the church and College Street, 16 bodies having been found within 16 square feet. The oak tree was planted in 1909 in honour of President Abraham Lincoln's 100th birthday, 
and is known as the Lincoln Oak. In County Sligo, which lies north of the Republic of Ireland, an old birch tree was uprooted during a violent storm and revealed the tangled remains of a man believed to have died at least 900 years ago. The skeleton was torn in half when the tree was uprooted. His upper body hung to the underside of the uprooted tree, while his legs remained in the ground. After inspection by anthropologists, it was decided that the man was likely a murder victim because of clear signs of deep defensive wounds on his hands and slash marks on his ribs. The tree, which stood in the town of Coluni, was thought to be around 215 years old and would have grown on the spot hundreds of years after the young man's death, sometime in the early 19th century. The age of the victim was said to have been between 17 and 20 years old, having died during the 11th or 12th century, making his remains between 900 and 1000 years old. The tree was uprooted in 2014, but the gruesome discovery wasn't brought to the attention of the public until the following year. Archaeologist and author Dr Marion Dowd, who studied the remains, said, We don't know whether he died in a battle or whether this was a case of a personal dispute that ended in death. Records from the 19th century, some 700 years after the man's death, says that there was once a church with a graveyard in the area, but with no evidence of any other bodies in the immediate vicinity, it's unknown whether this man was one of those buried in the churchyard. This is the Bosna River, central to Bosnia and Herzegovina, which runs from the outskirts of Sarajevo to the eastern Croatian border. In 2014, across an area spanning 15 miles from the town of Magla to the city of Dorboy, a series of grim discoveries were made following some of the worst weather and flooding the region had seen for 120 years. Between May the 13th and 18th, 2014, a low-pressure cyclone affected a large area of southeastern and central Europe. This brought with it massive rainfall which caused landslides and a great deal of damage to communities, forcing people to flee from their homes. After the Bosna River burst its banks on May the 16th, several metres of water crashed through the towns in the area and by the time the clean-up mission began, almost 100 people had died. But after the waters receded, it wasn't just the bodies of those who drowned in the flood that lined the riverbank towns. After the floods washed away a three metre layer of earth, the decomposed bodies of long dead souls were discovered in the aftermath, people believed to have died at the start of the Bosnian War, which took place between 1992 and 1995. The first of the bodies were discovered by electricians who were repairing power lines in Dorboy as the floodwaters receded and revealed the 26-year-old remains. The unearthed dead were thought to be mainly Bosniak Muslim men, aged between 19 and 57, from the nearby village of Jablanica, who were killed by Serb forces in the early stages of the conflict. Many of the bodies still had their hands tied behind their backs, and some had clear indications of bullet wounds inflicted at close range to the back of the head and neck. More than 9,000 people are still missing from the conflict, but it's almost certain that the dead bodies uncovered by the torrential rains of 2014 account for some of them. According to the Irish news website The Journal, aside from the people who died in the flood itself, 24 wartime bodies were found in the wake of the flood. However, this relatively recent discovery accounts for a small portion of the many mass graves unearthed across the region since the conflict ended in the mid-90s, and identification through gradual DNA analysis has been ongoing ever since. These are the cliffs of Monk Nash in South Wales. It was here in March of 2014 that a rambler by the name of Mandy Ewington looked up to find what looked like human bones protruding from the cliff face. 
Stunned at her discovery, she took this photo and sent it to an archaeologist by the name of Carl James Langford. Langford admitted to being sceptical at first, but when he went to investigate the find for himself, he found that the bones were the shin bones of a human. They had been uncovered due to recent coastal erosion in the area caused by severe storms. The femur bones, Langford said, are that of a male in his late twenties, and going by the history of the area, previous archaeological digs, and the depths of the grave, he estimated that the remains were from the 13th century, putting them at around 800 years old. The area was home to a community of monks from the 12th century until the 16th century, when the monasteries in the area were eventually closed. Partial human remains had been unearthed in the area in 1983 and 1990, but in 1993, the full remains of three adults were found buried together in an east-to-west line. According to Welsh archaeologists, coastal erosion in the area is said to be happening so quickly that human remains dating back hundreds of years are being lost to the sea before they have a chance to investigate. <laughs>